Hi, Gemini, and welcome to your November 2023 horoscope. 2024 is almost around the corner. Wow, where did time go by? I have opened 10 spots for personalized 2024 readings. We're going to sit down, pull up your chart, and talk about what 2024 will mean for you personally. This goes way beyond any horoscope ever could. The booking link is down below in the description box. We start off the month on November 2nd with Jupiter in your 12th house opposing the sun in your 6th house. This Scorpio season is asking you to spend a little bit more time with your personal routine, taking care of your health, going to bed on time, making sure you get enough food. And I think that can be a bit challenging for you sometimes, Gemini, especially because now with Jupiter in your 12th house, you may have a tendency to escape to be a little bit more withdrawn and in your thoughts. So this day is going to really ask for some balance from you in making sure you live in the real practical world. On November 3rd, we have Venus in your fourth house opposing Neptune in your 10th house. You tend to have a little bit of delusion when it comes to your career, the way that others see you out in the public. And on this day, you're especially going to come to face with this tendency. There might be some beautiful relationship, some beautiful news, some beautiful connection that you make with your family, with the close people around you that really highlights just how mistaken and out of loop you are with the way that people view you. Just a day later, on November 4th, Saturn goes direct. And Saturn is officially done with Aquarius. From now on, it's going to stay in Pisces for a while. It's going to continue onwards. And Saturn is going to be in your 10th house. It's been there already since March. So you may have been feeling a little bit of a damper when it comes to your career. Perhaps things are not going so well. Things are a little bit more difficult. And you have to be a little bit more grown up and practical when it comes to your career. One piece of advice for this transit is don't get discouraged. Sometimes all you need to do is think outside of the box in order to still get to your desired goal. On November 13th, we have a new moon in Scorpio in your sixth house, opposing Uranus in your 12th house. The new moon, so the moon and the sun, are conjunct Mars in your sixth house. So actually for all of November, the sun and Mars are moving really in conjunction the whole month with each other and this new moon is no different. This means that you're going to have quite a lot of energy, enthusiasm and drive in November. This new moon symbolizes a new beginning, uh, a new step that you want to take in terms of your day-to-day -day routine. And you might find, especially on this new moon, that you're being challenged by all of the fluctuations in your internal world. Uh, all of the fluctuations with perhaps your mental health, with all of the fluctuations and the limiting beliefs that you put on yourself. So try to step beyond those and allow yourself to embrace this new beginning with open arms. On November 17th, the Sun and Mars conjunction is exact. And on this day, as they become exactly conjunct, they trine Neptune in your 10th house. So you see a theme emerging. We're talking a lot about your 6th, your 12th, and your 10th house. If you have allowed yourself during the new moon a couple of days before to embrace this new beginning um, in the way that you take care of yourself, then you might find that there is a beautiful reward uh, when it comes to your career. Perhaps you find that it allows you to think better and to show up better in your work. On November 21st, the Sun and Mars reach the final degrees of Scorpio. And before they leave into Sagittarius, they sextile Pluto in your 8th house. Gemini, you have had Pluto in your 8th house for the last 20 years. <laughs> 
So you might have really been going through it. You have been getting a big lesson in what it means to become truly honest, naked, and vulnerable with another human being and still come on the other side with complete and utter love for them. And right now, I think that's a really beautiful wrap up of Scorpio season. See if you can tap into all of those things you learned about what it means to be honest and vulnerable with another human being and how you can apply that honesty and vulnerability with yourself and with your daily routines. On November 23rd, the sun enters Sagittarius, and as it does that, it squares Saturn in your 10th house. Just a day later, Mars enters Sagittarius as well and also squares Saturn. So as I said, the sun and, the, and Mars are moving quite closely with each other, actually, this whole month. So this square to Saturn in your 10th house is really putting a damper on uh, what is happening in your career. But with this shift into Sagittarius, we also see a shift of focus uh, for you. You are shifting from your attention on your routines and establishing a routine for yourself into a relationship allowing yourself to come in partnership with another human being. So I really see these two days, the 23rd and 24th, as a really difficult start into shifting that focus. So it's not going to be very easy for you to start shifting your focus to your partnerships, even though you want to. And I assume this has something to do with your career. Probably your career is asking a lot from you currently. It's really taking a toll on your energy, and therefore you're not able to expand that energy and attention to your partner. Don't worry, it's going to get a little bit easier uh, quite quickly because thankfully, Sun and Mars move quite fast. On November 27th, we have a full moon in your first house. So we have the Sun and Mars in your seventh house opposing the moon in your first house. And during this full moon, we also have Venus conjunct the south node in your fifth house. Because this is a full moon in Gemini, I see this time as new information being revealed to us and perhaps a lot of information, it's in the sign of Gemini after all, that perhaps feels overwhelming <laughs> and like way too much info. And especially because this full moon is happening in your first house, I see that perhaps you could be confronted with something in, in your relationship that actually reveals information about you, who you are as a person, what relationships mean to you, and how you want to show up in the world. And because Venus is conjunct the south node in your fifth house, it's possible during this time that it's the way that you have fun, your pleasures, your hobbies, that come up in this conversation with your partner. Perhaps you are doing a hobby or doing things for fun that are actually just to please your partner, uh, that are actually things that they like doing a little bit more than you like doing. Uh, so really allow yourself to get rid of any people-pleasing tendencies that you might have when it comes to the things that you do for fun. The Venus and South Node conjunction is only going to get stronger after the full moon. Venus and South Node are conjunct exact at their peak on November 29th. So right in time to close off the month. Overall, Gemini, I would say this is a beautiful month to get your routine in order and it might be some time where you have a little bit of difficulty in your career. But that's all right, because soon enough, there will be some wonderful new developments in your partnership that will hopefully allow you to focus on something else. I have 10 spots available for 2024 uh, year ahead readings. If you're curious what 2024 has in store for you, then you can click on the booking link down below. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to catch a next month's horoscope. And I hope to see you again soon.